Hi everybody, I'm Jared Pike. This is Shell Point today for Tuesday, January 28th. On today's show, Michelle Smith teaches us about the importance of hydration. Tim Stevenson talks about estate planning in the trenches. And with this week's Academy Salute to Shakespeare, Dr. Erwin Rudolph will recite one of his favorite sonnets. Don't miss it. But first, this afternoon, we have a Shell Point support group meeting for those with COPD. In fact, anyone with breathing issues or anyone who uses oxygen concentrators or other equipment can benefit from this group. Their special guest tomorrow is Dr. Sunil Pami, a pulmonologist with Lee Physician Group. All are welcome to the COPD support group at 1.30 p.m. in the Woodlands Oak Room. Also this afternoon, history buffs will love this month's library book talk. It's called The President's Club, Inside the World's Most Exclusive Fraternity. Hear the unique stories of relationships between presidents and ex-presidents. Our reviewer is Bill Saunders of King's Crown, and of course, refreshments will be served. All are welcome to Library Book Talk this afternoon at 2.15 p.m. in the Social Center on the island. And then, tomorrow, we have a class from Tim Stevenson of the Legacy Foundation. Now, if you think planning your estate is hard, imagine Tim's job doing it for dozens of people at a time. You can learn from his experiences. Come to Estate Planning Stories from the Trenches tomorrow at 10 a.m. in the Grand Cypress Room. Terry Kolath has this preview. Hello everyone, I'm here today with Timothy Stevenson, Executive Director of the Legacy Foundation here at Shell Point. We're talking about Legacy Seminar number one for the spring semester of the Academy of Lifelong Learning. It will take place this Wednesday, Tales from the Trenches. Thank you for joining me, Tim. Thanks for having me. This title, as all of your titles, really catches my imagination. Why the word trenches? Good. I'm glad it catches your imagination. <laughs> uh, what I've found through the years is in any profession, whether it is a, a physician or uh, a lawyer or any of the professions, uh, when you're in it every day, you get to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. And in this case, we're telling tales uh, that two uh, attorneys who have been practicing for some time have learned over the course of their practice and so the story becomes uh, maybe we can save you a little trouble uh, by talking through some of the risks. And who are these people? Uh, I'm bringing two attorneys. Uh, Craig Hirsch is a board certified wills, trusts, and estates attorney. Uh, it's a Shepherd Law Firm, and he's practiced many years in Fort Myers, a good relationship with Shell Point. And Michael Hill, also board certified wills, trusts, and estates attorney. Uh, well received. They usually come in January each year and gives an update on what's going on in tax law and estate planning, and in this case, uh, the, the, the value of the wisdom of many years of practice. And it's wonderful to hear actual, actual stories of what has happened exactly. if you don't follow the steps. But, you know, most of us learn better because of conversation yes, than we do lecture. Mm -hmm. And so anytime we can get into more of a conversational uh, kind of dialogue, uh, taking a look at actual case studies, uh, that in itself is probably a more productive learning method sure. than simply reciting information. So the other thing that I want to make sure that, that I bring up uh, is that for two months uh, we have been promising a special announcement mm -hmm. that will be of particular interest to those who uh, attend the seminars on a monthly basis and we've been announcing that for the last two months and so this is the time Wednesday's the day that we'll be making that particularly special announcement good so not only for the information that you're going to hear from the trenches but also for a special announcement from Timothy Stevenson hope you're there with us on Wednesday please sign up at either service desk Michelle Smith is here now to discuss hydration. Whether you're exercising or just living your daily life, drinking enough water is essential. Michelle will have some more insight on the topic on Monday at 1.15 p.m. in the Social Center. Here's a preview. 
I'm Mary Franklin here today with Michelle Smith, Fitness Supervisor, talking about a Health Connections program coming up on Monday, February 3rd at 1.15 p.m. in the Social Center. Hydration is a very important aspect of our daily life. We need to make sure that we're getting the proper fluid. But Michelle Smith is going to talk to us about why it is so important to be properly hydrated. Michelle, what are you going to touch on? Of course, we're going to talk about why it's important to drink water, other fluids that may count in your daily water intake, um, as well as certain fruits and certain vegetables that have a higher water content that can also contribute to the amount of water and fluid that we um, give our body. And even though it's the cooler months, it's still important to stay hydrated. And it's not just if you went out and you ran four miles and you sweat a lot. There's a lot of other reasons you need that may cause you to be a little bit more dehydrated. Absolutely, not only weather, not only exercise, but different medications that we may possibly be taking, um, the climate, a little bit of everything. This is going to be a great program. If you can sign up at either service desk or give us a call, you won't be disappointed by hearing Michelle Smith speak on Monday, February 3rd at 1.15 in the Social Center. I'm Mary Franklin along with Michelle Smith. Have a happy and healthy day. This Thursday, we hear from a musical instrument that doesn't often get the spotlight, the bassoon. We're pleased to welcome Shelley Monroe Huang, who has degrees from both the Eastman and Yale schools of music. As a part of chamber groups and orchestras, she plays the bassoon and its very large and deep cousin, the contra bassoon. Shelley enjoys performing contemporary works alongside the classics. So don't miss her performance this Thursday at 7 p.m. in the Grand Cypress Room. Your ticket also includes dessert and mingling with the artist afterward. So get your tickets at either service desk or call our box office at 454-2067. Now, great news about Shakespeare. He's written a new play. Okay, just kidding. Actually, we're celebrating his 450th birthday this year with an academy class called Salute to Shakespeare. Ray Boyce has traveled to Oxford and Cambridge to study the Bard and will share his expertise with you. Now, this class has been rescheduled to combine sessions one and two into one mega session, happening Thursday at 9.45 a.m. in the Social Center on the island. Terry Koleth has this preview. Hello, I'm Terry Koleth, and I'm here today with Ray Boyce of Rosemont, and we're talking about a semester of celebration. We're celebrating the 450th anniversary of Shakespeare with a friend and neighbor. Thanks for joining me, Ray. Nice to be here. First of all, we want to find out a little bit of how, a little bit about how you got interested in Shakespeare in your um, retirement time of life. Well, like everyone, I think uh, I always had some interest in Shakespeare, more of a curiosity, uh, didn't gravitate it to it that quickly, easily, because the language is difficult and all the other reasons when you're younger, you resist reading it. Uh -huh. But I always wish that I had uh, a greater insight and greater familiarity with Shakespeare, his work, and his life. And, and uh, then when I got to retirement, I started going to continuing education programs, started here in the States up at Dartmouth College, and then gradually went to England, where I've done about eight different uh, courses over the last eight or ten years. And the last three have all been on Shakespeare at Merton College uh, at Oxford. And uh, through a series of lectures and a wonderful tutor and very interesting classmates, I, I got what I call the Shakespeare bug. And my interest has uh, increased dramatically. And now with this 450th anniversary of his birth on April 23, I find it a particularly relevant time to uh, maybe talk a little bit about him and his work and his, the legacy that we have from this wonderful man. Well, looking at the 450th anniversary brings to mind, that's a long, long time ago that Shakespeare was writing. Why are we still interested in Shakespeare today? Well, it's obvious that the man's writings and the stories and the poetry and uh, his life are of great interest to people, most especially 
uh, we find it very, very relevant to everything that happens in our lives and in, in the world today. He's as fresh, it seems like, to people, to audiences, and to performers, and to theater companies uh, as he ever was. And uh, that's an amazing con contribution to our civilization. And uh, I think I was uh, noticing the other day that the number of productions of Shakespeare's plays are, are just abounding. And uh, in New York, I just read that in New York City, in the last four months, there have been no less than 18 productions of Shakespeare in, uh, in New York City and environs. So it is a, it's really quite a, a, an industry in itself. So I love how you're going to do this, Ray. First, we're going to have on January 30th, and these are all going to be Thursday mornings, every other week throughout this spring semester. We're going to spend some time with Shakespeare in celebration. A salute to Shakespeare, we're calling it. Where you're going to help put this, um, this famous, famous person into a context for us of the time he lived and wrote. I think we agreed that uh, a way to begin would be to explore a bit the period before, the historical period in England, to some extent around the world. Uh, uh, to do that, we would look at uh, uh, the history of Henry VIII and the aftermath of all of that. We would look then at the Elizabethan period, and then we would follow that up with the Jacobean period. So th we thought that that would help, uh, mm -hmm. even if we just do a brief survey of all of that, uh, to put it somewhat in context. And there are some interesting things that one finds very quickly, uh, even in the most casual reading about the whole period. Uh, then I guess we thought we would get in more to his work. We would look at his uh, his herb, so to say, the plays, the poetry, the uh, sonnets, uh, uh, and then we would uh, do some examination of the structures of the plays and uh, and uh, some of the things we were talking about, the, the, the language and, and the techniques of playwriting and the theater companies of which he was part. And then after that, that if we do a decent job on that, uh, we should be able to move on to four plays. It's going to be fabulous. All right, so I want to make sure that you know you're invited to sign up to help set the stage for the celebration and the further look at plays of Shakespeare. Now, there is likely no bigger Shakespeare fan at Shell Point than Dr. Erwin Rudolph of the Arbor. With a PhD in English literature, Dr. Rudolph was teaching and reciting poetry at Shell Point even before there was an academy. We asked Dr. Rudolph to come into our studio and recite one of his favorite Shakespearean sonnets. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when an alteration finds, or bend with the remover to remove. Oh no, it's an ever fixed mark that looks on tempest and is never shaken. It's a star to every wandering bark, whose verse unknown, although its height be taken. Love's not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheek within his bending sickle compass comes. Love alters not with the brief hours or weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be air and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. Now, I have to tell you folks, Dr. Rudolph is 98 years old and did that completely from memory. Now, even I use a script when I record this show, but he knew this down pat along with To Be or Not To Be and several others. In fact, let's hear it one more time. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when an alteration finds or bend with the remover to remove. Oh no, it's an ever fixed mark that looks on tempest and is never shaken. It's a star to every wandering bark whose verse unknown, although its height be taken. Love's not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheek within his bending sickle compass comes. Love alters not with the brief hours or weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be air and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. To learn more about Shakespeare, make sure you attend Salute to Shakespeare, an academy class happening Thursday at 9.45 a.m. 
in the social center on the island. Now, let's find out what to expect on our Tuesday with happenings, academy, menus, and church connections. Happy Tuesday, everyone. My name is Leslie Brand, and I'm here with Bev Chanley. And this is the happening segment of Shell Point TV. We have a lot of activities going on today, so make sure you turn up the volume to those TVs. At 7.15, we have a Health Connections, the Ben, Breathe, and Balance, and the Health Club. 8 o'clock is the Round Robin Doubles Tennis at the Tennis Courts. Stamp Ministry is at 8.15 in the Stamp Room on the Island. Ladies Golf Association is at the Shell Point Golf Club at 8.30. 9 o'clock is Bocce at the Bocce Courts. Open Painting will be at 9.15 in the Art Studio. 9.30 is the Match Play Mixed Tennis at the Tennis Courts. It is doubles. 10.15 through the Bible is in the Osprey Room on the island. 11 o'clock is the Suzy Q. They're going out to Rum Runners for lunch and sign up is required. And we have a special treat at 11.30. It's Caribbean Spice with Dee Dee Darcy and Ruth Duber. It's a taste of Cuba and the Caribbean. And it, it will be at the Arbor Country Kitchen at the Woodlands, and it is currently full. 11.45 is Health Connections, Living Healthy, and the Osprey Room on the island. Now here's Bev to tell everyone the afternoon activities for today. Well, Leslie, we're going to start this afternoon out at 12.30 where Mixed Progressive Bridge will be played in the game room down at the Woodlands. At 1.15, we have the Knitters Group in the Osprey Room. Also at 1.15, we have Shuffleboard. That's on the Shuffleboard Courts behind the Resident Activity Center. Again at 1.15, we have the Rollicking Recorderists. They'll be in the Tarpon Room of the Tunnel. And then our last 115 activity is the Women's Ministries Prayer Group. That'll be in the hospitality room of the Village Church. At 1.30, we have a COPD support group. That'll be in the Oak Room of the Woodlands. Also at 1.30, the Stamp Ministry will be in the Sable Room, also at the Woodlands. At 2.15, the Library Book Talk will be in the Social Center. We move to 245 for our Health Connections class, Balance and Mobility Training Level 2. This will be in the Health Club. It's currently full. And then at 415, we have Health Connections. That's the class I teach. It's Tai Chi Cha. That'll be in the Health Club, and currently that is full. Well, we thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you back here again tomorrow. Hi, I'm Terry Koleth with your Academy information for Tuesday. At 9.15, we offer how to use and be productive with Gmail. This continues in the Computer Teaching Center on the island. At 9.15, our pottery class, Throwing on the Wheel, continues in the pottery studio on the island. And at 10 o'clock, we welcome Professor Adrian Care for Amban, Malukan Mountainous Rainforest. This takes place in the Grand Cypress Room, and you can sign up right at the door. At 10.15, Apple iPad, got one, now what? continues in the Manitou Room on the island. And our Life Review Reminiscence class continues in the Buttonwood Room at the Woodlands at 1 o'clock. At 1.15, Designing and Making Greeting Cards with a Hallmark Program begins in the Computer Teaching Center of the island. Sign up is required. Then our afternoon session of the Pottery Throwing on the Wheel course takes place in the Pottery Studio of the island beginning at 1.15. At 4.30, the Alpha course continues for those who have signed up. I'd like to tell you about some new classes coming tomorrow. Digital Camera Prep School will take place with Herb Sklar of Eagles Preserve and Estate Planning Stories from the Trenches, our first legacy seminar of the semester. Menus for Tuesday. In the Crystal Room, the Crystal Platter is barbecue brisket with home fries and seasoned greens. The dinner special is the Build Your Own Stir Fry Bar for $11.95, and the soup of the day is Navy Bean. In the Island Cafe for lunch, enjoy a chili cheeseburger with chips for $7.25. The dinner special is Hawaiian Grilled Tilapia with steamed rice and vegetables for $8.25. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill on Tuesday are Soft Shell Crab for $15.95 or T-Bone Steak for $19.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net.
Hi, welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm Andy Hawkins, the senior pastor of the Village Church, and I'm here with John Stumbo. John is the newly elected president of the Christian and Missionary Alliance. So welcome, John. Good to see you today, Andy. Tell us a little bit about the expanse of uh, the Christian and Missionary Alliance across the globe, because I understand, for instance, that uh, the United States Church here is not the largest church. Oh, by no means. Yeah. I appreciate you bringing that up. There's 2,000 Alliance churches here in the United States, 40% of which are non-Anglo. 36 languages spoken in Alliance churches on any given Sunday in the United States. Hmm. Uh, then beyond the United States, you're correct, uh, our, our, we're, we're 10 times larger internationally than we are here in the States. And countries like the Philippines and Vietnam and Cote d'Ivoire, other countries having much larger national churches than the, than the U.S. CMA does. But one of the beauties of what the CMA has done through the decades has been to establish autonomous uh, local churches within the nation. So they have their own mm -hmm. seminaries. They have their own governance structure. They're funded. We're, we're no longer funding uh, many of these national churches uh, around the world. They are now fully self-supporting. So a truly indigenous local church has arisen in these in these nations. And that's what, we're, that's what we love to see. The, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ coming into a culture and a people group, being being owned by, by that people group and then, and then actually they start sending out missionaries themselves. So we've got Alliance churches in other countries who are now missionary sending churches. Yeah, that's one of the most exciting things that uh, really strike me about uh, the Alliance. Uh, we often hear from people who are sort of critics of Christianity in general and, and missions in particular that it's kind of a colonial operation in which we're trying to impose uh, some kind of a, a, a cultural structure. But the opposite has been the case with respect to uh, our movement, the Christian and Missionary Alliance, as we've gone into other countries, that we really have established uh, churches on their own, run by people. In fact, um, one of the most significant developments in, in our denomination has been the removal of missionaries from very successful fields to go to other fields that, uh, where, where we need them because those indigenous churches have been so uh, prolific and so successful. We have once in a while, and as you've alluded to, made hard decisions to say we're done with our work as Westerners in this country. Mm -hmm. The local church is now strong enough, and so to, to turn that, that, the church completely over into the hands of the nationals and then uh, reassign, when possible, uh, those uh, international workers to some of the least reached, least evangelized places on the globe. Because, and it's still the reality, that there are many places on the planet where the name of Jesus Christ is not not known at all, or he's only known as some prophet and not known as the divine Son of God, the, the way of salvation. And so uh, we have the privilege of, of getting into some very difficult regions now Absolutely. where uh, it's, it's frankly illegal for us to be in some of these places mm -hmm. according to the laws of the land. But through creative access means uh, we're able to uh, become, learn the language, become part of the culture, and sensitively begin to share the gospel. Yeah, that's very exciting. Now, of course, uh, you're here because uh, you've been uh, recently elected president of this denomination, and uh, that is the, the American church, the United States church, and uh, that often, uh, I would think, has its challenges. Uh, so as you approach this kind of ministry, uh, what kinds of, uh, I don't know, f thoughts, fears, trepidations, uh, excitements uh, have crossed your mind in the last uh, number of months? When I got out of seminary a few decades ago, I realized, you know, there's lots of great church families out there, various organizations in which I could serve. I don't need to just be in the Alliance because my family was from the Alliance, but uh, I I thought, you know, I, I love the theology, the fact that we're centered on Christ. I love the missions emphasis that we do care about Acts 1-8, the whole world. And I've always liked the people. Every, and so I'm this young 20-something guy, but I'm thinking every time I'm around some Alliance people, I, I've had good experiences, so why would I want to choose another family? So here now, decades later, I've been appointed the president. I'm humbled by that. I'm privileged by that. I'm thrilled by that because now I get to be part of shaping what the next generation experiences as who is the alliance, what do we value, what, uh, what are the foundational things upon which we continue to, to build. And uh, I'm glad that as I come in, I don't have to, like, overturn decades of bad history. No, I enter into a, a great movement that has been well-led uh, by, by men of, uh, and women of character through the decades. 
And so uh, I, I want to, yes, there'll be some new vision, there'll be opportunity for some, some, some new thrusts or emphases, but uh, I join a great progression of the work of God through this fabulous family. Yeah. Now, we just uh, spent some time in our local district conference, and you were a speaker uh, on those occasions, several occasions in that conference, and I remember you telling us uh, what the stipulated roles were for the president of the Christian and Missionary Alliance. You're referring to my ministry description. That's correct. Yes. yes. The first line of the ministry description says that the president is the spiritual leader and chief executive officer of the Christian Missionary Alliance. And I really take that word order seriously because I believe that those church fathers within our movement that wrote that document were serious about saying, first and foremost, we need spiritual leadership. Yes, we need that CEO, executive oversight. That's important, and I would seek to do that well. But uh, first, before we're an organization, we are a gathering of people. And before we're some sort of entity that needs execution, pardon that word, <laughs> uh, we, we need to be spiritually led. Mm -hmm. And so I feel this assignment, this calling to be a spiritual leader, not qualified for that in and of myself, but that's where we depend upon God to make us that which we are not able to be. I think all of us as pastors recognize that none of us are really qualified for the kind of ministry to which we're called, and it's only by His strength and His grace we can do that. But we're to live worthy of the calling we've received. Exactly right, exactly right. Uh, it, I want you to know that uh, while we haven't had a chance to get uh, acquainted very often uh, in the past, it's been a, a delight and privilege to get to know you a little bit over the last number of days, and I can tell you that uh, your uh, spiritual ministry at our recent conference uh, was a great blessing to me and an encouragement to me. And so uh, not only can I see that you take that spiritual leadership uh, responsibility seriously, but uh, I believe you're gifted at doing that. And I think you'll be a great blessing uh, to your church, which is the uh, really the pastors of the Christian and Missionary Alliance, sort of where your congregation. And I very much appreciate that ministry that you've already had to me and to many others in this denomination. Well, I thank you for that. And Andy, you need to know that I've been hearing reports all the way to Colorado Springs of the good things that God's doing here at the Village Church and, mm -hmm. and throughout Shell Point Village, and, and that your participation in, in this has been very significant. You've been exceedingly well received. Well, here, so. people are, have been very uh, blessed and kind to us, and, and we just delight in the ministry here at the Village Church. Good. Well, thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure to spend some time here with John Stumbo, our recently elected president of the Christian and Missionary Alliance, and we hope you'll join us soon at the Village Church or through Shell Point Television, participating in our worship services. Hope to see you soon. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow as we visit the Occupational Therapy Suite, helping people to recover one step at a time. We'll also stop by the Island Cafe, to see why people love this all-in-one restaurant. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Tuesday, January 28th. I'm Jared Pike, and from all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow.